on joining me now for Friday's Meet the Boss interview is David Jones, Global CEO of Have Us Worldwide. David, welcome. Thanks very much for Thank coming you. in. Thank you. It's hard to have uh, somebody with uh, your experience in and not talk to them at the moment about BP. Um, their reputation clearly is terribly important to their future. If you were advising them right now, what would you be telling Tony Hayward to do? I, mean, I think the key thing is you have to go back in time, unfortunately. I think mm. part of the, you know, clearly it's a major issue what's actually happening, and it would be a massive story, whatever, but I think it's been exacerbated by a couple of things. And the first of those is, you know, they were probably the pioneer of what I would call nice washing. You know, a decade ago, they changed their logo to a flower. They positioned mm. themselves as one of the most socially responsible businesses in the world. And unfortunately, you know, their kind of reputation is currently being washed up on the shores of America, as is that image. And I think the other thing is, in, in, a, in the social media world in which we live, mm. transparency, authenticity and speed are the three key rules. And I think they, they haven't really been any of those three things. So I think the fir first thing is, you need to go back into, I mean, mm -hmm. the oil industry, it's a tough business. Mm. No one says it's easy, but you don't have to change your logo to a flower and position yourself as the kind of company you're not. And I think they, they over-promise and under-delivered on that. Right. So it's not a, it's, I mean, everybody thinks that the idea that, you know, being corporately responsible is nice. As a consumer, you like to think that what you're buying is ethically sourced. Absolutely. But on the other hand, companies really have to deliver on that promise. Is that what you're saying? It's not yeah. enough just to, as you say, have a logo and say, oh, we're, you know, we're very nice. It has to actually, it has to actually matter. They have yeah, to, I mean, to I, change I, the way they do business. I think for me, we're, we've had, we're into the third age of socially responsible business. Mm -hmm. The first stage was all about image. So companies yeah. did it to change their image. I think, that, and BP being a key example, the second age was, is actually about, or was about genuine competitive advantage. And I think Walmart is a brilliant example of that, who really had pioneered and led in the space and it actually genuinely helped and delivered their business mm -hmm. and I think we're moving into the third age which is actually about damage limitation which is if you are not a socially responsible business in the future mm -hmm. then consumers you know in the, the digitally empowered consumer will punish those businesses that it doesn't believe live up to their standards. You mentioned digi the digital age a little bit here and I think that does make a key difference doesn't it because we're all much more aware now through the internet through Twitter whether or not your Nike trainers are being made in a factory exactly, in um, yeah. Vietnam um, and, you know, we know that they're not anymore, but whatever. All those things are, are, are much more accessible to the, uh, to the consumer. But do you think the consumer really cares? I mean, we do still have a lot of disposable fashion. We do still want cheap goods. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they fundamentally do care. And the, the Who Cares Wins report that we did, we look at both what businesses mm -hmm. are looking for and what consumers are looking for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 86% of consumers across the world in the study we did mm -hmm. basically want to buy from businesses that are more socially responsible. They believe that something like 76% believe that they should actually vote with their wallets mm. and censor companies that are perceived to be unethical. So they want it. Now clearly, you know, we're at the start of a journey mm. and there are, you know, Apple are not necessarily one of the most socially responsible businesses in the world, but people love Apple. Yeah. But my point is that, you know, if you have the choice between two identical products at the same price and one fundamentally is a great company that's socially responsible and the other isn't, it is obvious who is going to get your business. Uh, I was actually going to bring up Apple because I, I, I agree with you, you know, if you want to buy an iPad, you're going to buy one. But on the other hand, what's been happening in, uh, in Shenzhen, and, yeah. uh, you know, I think maybe 10 years ago that really wouldn't have worried Steve Jobs because it is um, a little tiny component that's been sourced out. Now that really is a big issue and everybody's talking about it. Yeah, and it becomes a big issue. And I think, mm. you know, look at what happened with Nike when mm. they had all the problems mm. around factories. Yeah. They became incredibly transparent. Transparent. They actually published all the data of where they were making it and it made them a better company. I think my fundamental belief is that we're going into a very good period for business because the businesses that are the most successful in the future will be the ones that are the most socially responsible and that will be driven by the digitally empowered consumer and the, you know, the, the, their ability through social media to actually impact and have a role. And I think people today believe that they can control companies through brands and how they, how they purchase in a way that they potentially can't control governments. Now, you're CEO of a global company. Yeah. When you look around the world, are you seeing different trends in advertising depending on where you are? Um, or is it wrong to say that perhaps the West has got a more sophisticated view of advertising? I mean, I think globally, mm. you know, the, the two things that our clients are very interested in, social media mm -hmm. and social responsibility. I mean, they, those, that's pretty much 
at a, a sort of summary level. Now, I think in markets like China, India, um, you know, there's just such rapid growth ha having happened and happening again in those mm. markets that it's much more just kind of surfing the top of the wave. I think in markets such as Europe, uh, which is a lot softer at the moment, mm. it's how do we drive and, and deliver growth. But I think the digital revolution is happening everywhere mm -hmm. uh, and dramatically changing not only the nature of, you know, I think we're living through the social revolution and people in a hundred years will learn about the social revolution in the way that we learned about the industrial revolution. Mm. And that really is affecting, is, I mean, are you seeing an awful lot of these these messages of corporate responsibility affecting a younger generation? Yes, I mean, we, we founded our kind of CSR play as a thing called One Young World, which I, I founded with Kate Robertson, my partner in the UK at the start of this year. Um, and it's basically the Davos for young people. So we brought together yes. nearly a thousand under 25 year olds, brilliant from 110 countries around the world with counselors such as Kofi Annan, Desmond Tutu, Mohammed Yunus, Bob Geldof. And it was fascinating to listen to them speak uh, and because many of them are involved in business and they're mm. fundamentally an incredibly socially responsible generation. Mm. And they get it. They don't expect business not to make a profit. I think that was the thing we were quite surprised about. We thought they might be real idealists, like yeah. why does business have to make money? Not at all. They said business has to make profit. Mm. If it doesn't, people won't do it. But it can do it in the right way. Just before we go, we were hearing about uh, George Soros there talking about the double dip recession. From what you see with your global perspective, is that likely? I mean, my personal view is I don't think it will happen. Now, you know, no one saw the first one coming, so um, I think everyone who predicts, you know, we, we need to bear that in mind. But I think we're seeing unbelievable growth uh, in, in industry and business in general in Latin America. I think the U.S. had a strong first quarter on the whole. Europe is clearly very soft, but Asia's back. And I think for me, as long as the, most companies quarter two results are pretty solid mm -hmm. I don't think we'll see a double dip recession okay and we didn't even get on to talking about uh, David Cameron's airbrushing or not and uh, your uh, your role there in the, in the conservatives but please do come back and talk to us another time thank you very much thank indeed, you very much